Hey guys, welcome to another A-level maths revision video. Today we're taking a look at some AS content, and it's still quite early in the textbook, but we're looking at chapter 4, graphs and transformations. So, um, hopefully not too challenging of a, um, a, cha a chapter, um, but the, you know, this, there is some tricky questions within it. So let's just take a look at what we've got um, for this video. So the first question here, um, we've got this quadratic graph here, so it's y equals x to the power of 4. And we've got a sketch of it here. So the question is split into two parts. The first part, we want to find the coordinates of point P. So if you look at the graph, point P is this part here. And then we just want to find the values of B, C, D and E. So B, C, D and E are in our graph, y equals x to the 4 and so on and so on. So let's have a look at part A first. So the question you've got to ask yourself here is how do we work out what P is and what can we use to work out P? Well, the first thing I notice is that P is crossing the y-axis, okay, so that's when x equals zero. Um, now, obviously, because this graph is in terms of these constants that we don't know here, what we have to do is consider the graph that they've drawn us. So how would we do that? Well, we don't know the coordinates of P directly, but using the fact that we know the roots here, so it cuts through, um, or we could call them the critical values, at uh, minus 2, minus 1, 2, and then 3. So it cuts through these four coordinates on uh, the x-axis. So we can write this now as the factors that would give us um, when x equals 0. So what I mean by that is, for example, think about a dead basic quadratic. Um, so if that's like 1, for example, there, so that's 1 and that's uh, 3 there, then you could write that as x minus 1 and x minus 3. Okay, then would be the two solutions there when that's equal to 0. Same idea here, we're looking for when this is equal to 0, so that would be x plus 2, that would be my first one. The next one would be x plus 1. The next one, that would be at this point here 2, so that would be x minus 2. And then finally, x minus 3. So, how do we go from here now, these four factors, to giving me p? Well, remember, p um, would just be simply, in this case, this number times this number times this number times this number. Okay? Because it's just where x is equal to, um, or where, sorry, x is equal to 0. Um, so, you just put 0 into all these, you get plus 2, plus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So therefore, p is going to be equal to 2 times 1 times minus 2 and times minus 3. And if you just work that out, that will give you 12. Okay? So the coordinates, it will give us coordinates here. Coordinates will simply be 0, 12, p. Okay? So my coordinates. For part b here, we want to find the values of B, C, D, and E. So, we've got our four um, factors here. So essentially, just to get this quartic, we just need to expand it. So, a bit long-winded, but hopefully it shouldn't be too, you know, too challenging. Just take your time and just be careful with how you're multiplying it out. So what I'm going to do, just to make life a bit easier, I'm going to multiply out these last two first. Um, again, it doesn't matter you know, which way you do it, um, but if I multiply these out first, we can start getting rid of some of the minuses here. Um, Obviously, minus 2 times minus 3 will be positive 6. So, we'll have x plus 2 times x plus 1. So, that's okay so far. And then if we expand this, that'd be x squared. I'd get x times minus 3, so minus 3x, plus minus 2 times x, that's minus 2x, that gives me minus 5x in total. And then finally, minus 2 times minus 3 is positive 6. Okay? So, now... We've got these two factors here, and we've got this quadratic. So again, multiply x plus 1 by this, so you can do x plus 2 by this, and then finally you just do x plus 1 with the cubic. So I'm going to do x plus 1 times this. So what's that going to give me? Well, I'm going to do x times every factor in here, and then 1 times every factor in here. So what that'll look like is x cubed. Um, so x times minus 5x, so minus 5x squared and then x times 6, so I get 6x. Do the same here, so I get x squared minus 5x and then 1 times 6, so plus 6. 
And at this stage here, we just need to simplify this. So what will that give us? So that'll give us x plus 2. And then if you just simplify this, what you should get is x cubed uh, minus 4x squared plus x plus 6. And then finally, we just need to expand um, x plus 2 with this here. So what would this give us? That's going to give us x to the 4 x times x cubed, we're going to get minus 4x cubed, x times x would give us plus x squared, and then x times 6 would give us 6x. Do the same with the 2, so that'll give us 2x cubed, um, 2 times minus 4x squared will give us minus 8x squared, 2 times x will be plus 2x, and then finally 2 times 6 will give us plus 12 here. Okay, so let me just double check everything's right here. Um, minus 4x cubed, x squared, 6x, 2x cubed, minus 8x squared, 2x. Yep, that's all perfect. And then just simplify, just collect like terms here. And what you'll end up with is x to the 4, uh, minus 2x cubed, minus 7x squared, plus 8x, plus 12. So now we just need to identify which ones, B, C, D, and E. And like you can see here, we use the ones they've given us. So B is the coefficient of x cubed. So if we just write them at the top here, B is minus 2. C, well, that'll just be the coefficient of x squared. So that'll be minus 7. Keep going along here, D, that'll just be A. And then E is just 12. Okay, so like you see, nothing too challenging, just long-winded, very easy to make a mistake. So just take your time um, and just work through it slowly. But that's the end of that first question there. Next question here, now again from the textbook, uh, we're asked to sketch two graphs, um, then we're asked to explain why there's no real solutions um, to this quadratic, and then part C, we're just going to work out a range of values um, to give us two points of intersection. So let's just start with part A first. Now, we're only sketching the graph. I'm no artist by any means, so mine are going to be pretty terrible. Um, but as long as you identify kind of where it cuts through the axes, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, when you're doing this in your exams or in class, just use a ruler, don't do what I'm doing, do it freehand. Um, but let's do the quadratic first, so y equals x squared plus 1. Well, this is just a quadratic, which would have a repeated root here, but shifted up by 1. Okay, So it's just going to cut through the y-axis at 1 here, so it might look something like... Something like that, okay. Pretty terrible, it shouldn't kind of have that little ridge there, but you know, just the idea that it's going to cut through a one, okay. And then let's draw this linear um, equation here. So 2y is equal to x minus 1. So we could write that as y equals x minus 1 divided by 2. Well, if we sketch this again, where is it going to cut through the y axis? Well, that would be when x is 0. So that's minus a half. So it's going to cut through at minus a half. So let's just say that's there. That's minus a half, this point here. And where's it going to cut through the x-axis? Well, simply, it's just going to cut through the x-axis at um, x equals 1. So let's just say that's there. Okay. So this graph is going to look something like this. So if you just join a line between these two points, it's going to look something like that. Okay. So the key kind of thing that should jump out at you here is that these graphs don't actually intersect, okay? This um, quadratic does not intersect with this linear line. So this linear equation here. So we, what we can say now, and this is where we come on to part B, so we can see from the sketch, we can see from the sketch that there is no point There's no point of intersection. Of the curves. Okay. So we can use that fact to say that x squared plus one, seeing as they're both equal to y here, we can say x squared plus one, which is equal to y again, um, which is x minus one over two. Okay. What we can say now is that if you multiply this by 2 and just say equal to 0, which is what they've done here for part B, um, 
So multiply across here by 2. Get 2x squared plus 2 is equal to x minus 1. And then we want this equal to 0, so just subtract x minus 1 off both sides here. So 2x squared plus um, 1. Oh, sorry, add 1 to both sides, so you get plus 3 here, and we subtract x off, so minus x plus 3 is equal to 0 there. So in other words, this has no real solutions. Okay. So if you do further maths, you'd learn about another way you could solve this. But at A-level maths, um, we'd just say it has no real solutions. Okay. And then finally for part C here, um, 5 marks, quite a bit of work with it. Um, we're going to need to clear this just so we've got enough room to do it. So, we're asked to work out the range of values of A, such that the graphs of Y equals X squared plus A. So if you notice, that's very similar to what we had, um, and they've kept the other line the exact same. So Y equals X squared plus A, and then if I write it in terms of how I had it before, this is X minus 1 over 2. Okay. So we want to work at the range of values of A, so that these have two points of intersection. So there's there's a couple of different ways you could do it. In my opinion, the easiest way to do this would be to consider what we've learned earlier in A-level maths, the discriminant. So remember, if we consider the discriminant, if we're looking for two points of intersection, what we need to say, using the discriminant, discriminant, I think I've spelled that right, I'm terrible at English though, so b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. If it has two points of intersection or two solutions. So two points. Okay. So how do we consider the discriminant here? Well, we've got these two um, equations in terms of y. So what I'm going to do here is set them equal to each other, try and obtain it like we did in part b, being equal to 0, and then consider the discriminant. So x squared plus a is equal to x minus 1 over 2. So that would be 2x squared plus 2a is equal to x minus 1. Subtract x minus 1 off both sides again here. So what I'd get is 2x squared. Um, so I'd get 2x squared minus x plus 2a plus 1 equals 0. Okay. So now we need to work out the discriminant of this here. Okay. So b squared minus 4ac. So this is your coefficient of b here, so that would be minus 1 squared, minus 4ac, so minus 4, times a, which is 2, the coefficient of x squared, times c, so you, you see is the whole expression here at the end, okay, so 2a plus 1. So 4 times 2 times, so I'll do it in a bracket, 2a plus 1, okay, and this should be greater than 0. So all we need to do here is just start simplifying, so minus 1 squared, That'll be 1. 4 times 2 is 8. So what we've got here is 1 minus 8 lots of 2a plus 1. And this should be greater than 0. Expand this. So I'm going to get 1 minus 16a um, minus 16. Because this would be 16a and this would be 16. If we minus the full thing, we just get this. So simplifying this here. Um... Oh, sorry, that should be 8. That's minus 8. I was going to say something's gone wrong. Minus 8. I can't do basic maths. So, simplify here. So, I'm going to get minus 16a uh, minus 7 is greater than 0. And then I can write this. I want to, well, to make life easy, I'm just going to get 16a to po be positive. So, if I add that to both sides here. So, what we're saying then is basically 16a is less than minus 7. Okay? And then finally, just solve this for a, we just divide through by 16. So a is going to be less than minus 7 over 16. Okay? And that's, the, that's your final answer there. So if you ever get a question where it's asking you to work out a range of values um, for basically two points in section, similar how we've done here with graphs, a good way to always kind of consider is the discriminant. Um, so just always keep that as a method um, to use for a question like this. The next question here, so we're now we're looking at reciprocal graphs. So we've got the graph of y equals f of x, where f of x is 1 over x. We're told that it's translated, and then that the asymptotes are at x equals 4 and y equals 0. Um, so we just, got to, we just have to write in the equation of the transformed function. 
so um, there's not actually too much to this you just kind of got to understand how the reciprocal graph works so y equals 1 over x now I'm going to draw a sketch of this again I'm pretty pretty bad at art so it's, it's not great but just so you get the idea of what's going on so remember the reciprocal graph it looks something like this same again here in this quadrant something like that right now we have two asymptotes with this graph so if I change it to be red we'll draw the asymptotes on so your asymptotes of just y equals 1 over x well where does the graph kind of go very very close to but doesn't actually touch well that would be here x equals 0 so that's this basically what I'm drawing in the red here that's my asymptote and then we also have another one so that's x equals 0 now I do this one in um, let's do it in dark blue hopefully it looks okay I've also got another one here at y equals 0 I've also got this one here so that's y equals 0 that's my other asymptote now what we're told is we get basically um, two equations for my asymptotes again x equals 4 and y equals 0 and that is all you actually need to basically get your transformed function so how do we go from that well what we've got then is we've got a new asymptote which is at x equals 4 so imagine you were to draw that on so if I do it really good actually it might be a bit, a bit better to see so x equals 4 that would be somewhere up let's just do it over here okay that's my new asymptote there x equals 4 the y asymptote is just y equals 0 still so we're just on this this blue asymptote here so nothing's changed there so the only thing that's actually happened is basically everything's shifted four units to the right okay so let's go back to white pen shifting four units to the right now that's not very mathematical um, we'd actually say it's a translation so it's a translation four units to the right here so four units horizontally um, now if you're writing this in terms of a reciprocal graph this is really easy for a translation horizontally it's just in the denominator but remember you've just got to be very very careful if you're going four units to the right we would write that as x minus four okay so remember when you're translating horizontally it's kind of the opposite it's, I'm being a bit loose with that definition there but it'd be x minus four for four units to the right if it was two units to the left for example it'd be x plus two so just keep that in mind but that's your final solution there um, for that question so three marks for that like see nothing too bad so this next question here is just practicing um, you know the transformations and whether you, you know you know the definition of each one essentially so we start with this point P uh, for part A we're told on the graph of y equals f of ax the point P is mapped to the point Q so that's 4 1 okay so 2 1 goes to 4 1 okay now we're told kind of what we should be looking for it's f of ax so this is a stretch um, so obviously it's not a translation because we're using this transformation here now remember for this stretch here so for example if it was 2x then we divide the x one here by 2 okay um, so essentially if we're getting bigger my a has to be less than 1 right so in other words what we're actually saying here is basically 2 our starting coordinate divided by a becomes 4 so essentially what we're doing is 2 divided by a is equal to 4 so hopefully it's, you know you can just see the answer here but if you can't just start solving this for a here so you get 4a is equal to 2 divide through by 4 so you get a is 2 over 4 which is equal to half but you can see that here 2 divided by a half gives you 4 so that's simply all it is so a is a half there and then for part B, um, we've just been given three transformations. We need to write down the new coordinates. So let's have a go at it. Uh, I'll just clear it just so we've got enough room completely. So part B. So if we do number one first, so f of x minus 4. So this is a translation again. So if it's in the bracket with the x, it's a translation on the x coordinates. 
So our starting coordinate here is P21. So our translated, uh, our transformed coordinate here, I'll call it P prime. Um, so we're going four units to the right here. So add four to your two. Nice and easy, just get six one. There's nothing happening to the Y coordinate, so we'll just leave it like that. The second one, so this is three F of X. So again, it's not in the bracket, so it's nothing to do with the X. It's on the outside, so we're dealing with Y coordinates here. It's a stretch in the uh, stretch in Y direction. Okay, so we just need to consider this now. If it's three F of X, then we're times in our Y coordinate by three. So P is two one. So then the new coordinate here, P prime, um, is going to be two. Don't do anything with X, and then one times three, giving us two three. And then finally, for the last one, if we do it up here, we've got a bit of a combination here. Um, so we've got two transformations, essentially. We've got half of f of x minus 4. So again, there's nothing happening with the x here. So the transformations are dealing with the y coordinates. So it's a half f of x minus 4. So it's a stretch in the y direction again, just like we did with part b. And then we just deal with the minus 4. So, to stretch this time over half, so we're going to times this coordinate here, 1 by a half. So at this point then it's 2 and a half. And then we need to do this, deal with this minus 4. So this is a translation um, of 4 units down. So, stretch in y direction and then translation, if I write it mathematically, that would be translation of 0 minus 4. Okay, so applying all that then, so uh, what was it, 2, 1, so 1 times a half is a half, and then a half minus 4, so our new coordinate, so P was 2, 1, so P prime is going to be 2, and then 1 times a half is a half minus 4, so we get minus 3.5 there. Okay, so that brings us to the end of that one, like you see there are 3 marks for that, you know, nothing too crazy. And then we move on to the final question for this video. Um, so we've got f of x equals 1 over x again, so we've got the reciprocal graph. And um, we're asked to sketch the graph of y equals f of x plus 3. So the last question should help you answer this one. Um, so look at what we've got here, f of x. We add 3 to it. So think of how this transformation works. Um, so like I said before, there's nothing happening with the x here. Uh, it's just the y, so essentially the graph is just shifting up three units. Okay, so if I just kind of try and draw this, what's it going to look like? Well, remember the reciprocal graph. It's going to look something like that, something like that. So that's a very very quick sketch. Uh, but if I shift everything up three, so win up three units, what's it kind of going to look like? Well. It's going to look pretty similar here, um, something like that maybe. Obviously, I know I'm a slight above, slightly above my uh, y-axis, which isn't very good, but you know, make your y-axis a bit longer. But that's what it's going to look like there, roughly. Again, it's going to keep tending towards this asymptote. And over here now, if we move this up three, what's that going to look like? That's well, going to look something like this. Okay, so something like that. So the only thing we've got to kind of consider here. Um, are where are the asymptotes? I maybe should have drawn my asymptotes in first because this isn't going to look very good. So we've only shifted the y coordinate, so the x asymptote here, um, x equals zero, that's absolutely fine. So we just draw that on. So that's fine there. That's not gone anywhere. So x equals zero is an asymptote. We've also got one going across here. So it shouldn't really touch it, but you get the idea. So how do I work out the equation of this asymptote? Well, remember, for a reciprocal graph, it's y equals 0 and x equals 0. So if it was y equals 0 and we shift everything up 3, this new asymptote is y equals 3. Okay? So asymptotes. So the asymptotes are uh, x equals 0. 
and y equals 3. Okay. And then finally, for this last part here, we're asked to find the coordinates of the point where y equals fx plus 3 crosses a coordinate axis. How would we do it? Well, let's consider what happens. Um, so this doesn't cut through the y-axis, okay? So we can't work out where it cuts there, but it cuts through here, right? We've got this point here. So what we'd expect is that the x-coordinate is negative, um, and the y-coordinate here will be equal to 0, okay? So when y is equal to 0, we can set 1 over x plus 3 to be equal to 0, okay? So, just solving this now for x, so that's going to be 1 over x is equal to minus 3 times the x across here. So that's bad, that's minus 3x is equal to 1. And then divide through by minus 3 just to isolate x. So that'd be minus a third there. So therefore, the coordinates um, for it cuts through, so coordinates. So that's just simply going to be minus a third, minus a third, and then uh, y equals zero. So use that as a bit of an indicator. If you've got a positive x solution here, something's definitely gone wrong, because I can see it's, you know, it's left of the y-axis here, so it should definitely be negative. Um, but yeah, that brings us to the end of this video. Uh, hopefully it's not been too long, uh, but I hope this has helped. Um, if there's any errors, any mistakes, or any queries, please just let me know down below. <laughs>